Hello and welcome to Wireshark Certified Network Analyst video course. Today we will learn how to graph I.O. rates and TCP trends. We will cover the following subjects. We will learn how to create basic I.O. graphs, advanced I.O. graphs, how to graph RTTs, throughput rates, TCP sequences over time, how to detect window size issues and packet losses, duplicate acts, and retransmissions. One picture is worth a thousand words, so in order to clearly view traffic flow trends, Wireshark provides numerous graphs. Some of them are unidirectional, focusing on traffic in a single direction, while others, such as I.O. graphs, depict traffic in both directions. I.O. graphs offer you the possibility to manipulate X and Y axes. Unlike other graphs, in using advanced I.O. graphs, you can do calculations as well. Some graphs can be exported. Unidirectional graphs can appear empty sometimes. This is because you've selected a packet in the wrong direction. Select a packet in the reverse direction from the same conversation and open the graph again to view the full picture. IO graphs are useful to show the overall traffic in the trace file. It depicts the total amount of bytes including data and headers. Select statistics I.O. graphs to plot the packets per second rate of all traffic in the trace file. X-axis is set to a tick interval of one second by default. You can plot five different channels, each with a different color. To modify the resolution, change the pixels per tick value. You can adjust the unit in the Y-axis or switch to the advanced I.O. graphs. The scale is automatically selected by Wireshark, but you can change it, even to a logarithmic scale. To smooth the graph, select a value from the list until it fits your needs. Disable channels which don't need to be smoothed. Note that you will see plotted just the displayed packets, so clear the display filter if you want to graph the whole traffic. Click on any point on the graph to jump to the first packet plotted on the pixel you clicked on. To compare specific traffic with the overall traffic, leave the first channel as is and write the display filter for the traffic that interests you in the second channel. Press on the graph number to enable the channel. Use a saved filter by pressing the filter button. Or you can copy the filter from right click submenu in the packet details plane. Wireshark supports five different channels with the specified colors. There are four different styles for plotting data, Experiment with each channel to obtain a better view. Remember that the first channel will always be in front of the others, so it can block other channels with lower values, if the channel uses FBAR. Tick interval defines how often the traffic should be plotted on the graph. If it's set to one second, data will be examined for one full second and then plotted. To alter the spacing of the ticks, Change the pixels per tick value. Select view as time of day to see the actual time instead of seconds since beginning of capture. One useful application of IO graphs could be plotting traffic generated by different hosts across time. Set the display filters and play around with the options to find the best ones. To compare bandwidth used based on application, use TCP port or UDP port filters. Another use of I.O. graphs is bandwidth consumed by a subnet. There are numerous different uses for the graphs. You just have to use your imagination and work with graphs as often as possible. By selecting advanced in the y-axis unit, you can plot on graph the following calculations. Sum for adding up all field values and plotting it on the graph for every tick interval. Count frames for plotting the number of matched frames. Max plots the occurrence with the maximum field value. Min with the minimum value. Average for the average value with the tick period. And load for measuring the response time fields only. To plot the amount of TCP data in your trace file, use the field TCP LIN. 
To view data crossing each direction in a conversation, apply display filters with the source and destination IPs. The count frames calculation is useful when graphing expert into flags like TCP analysis retransmission. It will ignore the value of any field and just count the number of occurrences. Count field is a recently introduced option with limited use with the primary function in diameter messages because there can be more than one message in the packet. And count field calculation will plot the number of field occurrences in the tick interval. Min, max, and average calculations are used to measure latency time between packets. Use frame time underscore delta field to measure latency times. Load calculations are used for fields like SMB time or RCP time, and they are used to plot the client load on the server. Select statistics, TCP stream graph, round trip time graph to view the RTT from a data packet to the corresponding act. It works in a single direction, so it could be empty if the wrong packet is selected. Y axis is the RTT in seconds, and the X axis is the sequence number. In slow traffic, you can see many vertical stripes. This occurs because of a packet losses and a high number of duplicate acts are sent. It can also happen when data is hold in buffer and a large number of packets is sent at a time. Zoom in out with plus and minus on your keyboard or middle mouse click, zoom in and shift middle mouse click zoom out. Move using the right click or arrow keys. Click on a point to move to the respective packet in the packet list pane. A normal data transfer won't have those vertical stripes. RTT can be plotted as well in advanced I.O. graphs using TCP analysis ACK RTT. You can change the graph setting in the control window. Next we will learn throughput routes graph. Y-axis is the throughput value in bytes per second and the x-axis is now the time in seconds. Here, gaps indicate a decrease in throughput, most likely due to packet losses. Time sequence graphs are similar, but TCP trace style provides more information, so we'll look at it. As the name implies, it plots the sequence numbers over time. In an ideal world, the graph should be a straight line from the left bottom corner to the upper right. Each packet is plotted as a small bar. The bigger the bar, the more data it contains. The gray plot shows the window size. When the main line touches the window line, it means the receiving side has a zero window condition. When packet losses occur, you will see duplicate bars at two different times in the graph. If you are capturing at a location before packet loss occurs, or gaps in the bars if you are located after the packet loss. Duplicate acts are drawn as small ticks along the receiving line with long bars for every other packet. And finally, when retransmissions are caused by a timeout, you won't see duplicate acts. There will just be a bar which is sent after the timeout expires. One more graph in Wireshark is window scaling. To view it, you should select a packet from the receiving side, unlike previous graphs. When a window size drops to zero, you will clearly see it here. You can find the maximum window size as well. In this video, we've learned how to graph I.O. rates and TCP trends. At the beginning, we discussed the I.O. graphs and advanced I.O. graphs. We've learned how to graph RTT, throughput, TCP sequences, and window sizes. Also, how to detect window size issues along with packet losses, retransmissions, and duplicate act using those graphs. 
That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching and see you the next time. Bye.